The Marble Clock that shows seconds already has a swap mechanism that can swap all 15 marbles in no time. And a marble selection mechanism that in a very overkill way can select the appropriate marbles for each digit using this stack of cam discs. Each disc represents a position on the digit, so there are 15 discs in total. And this stack does a complete revolution every 10 seconds, going from 0 to 9 and then starting from 0 again in the next revolution. Of course, nobody is perfect, and since last video I had to redesign and reprint all the ramp assemblies because the levers weren't rigid enough, and also the parts around the bearings were too wide and were touching on the discs next to them, and the ramps were 1 mm too tall, I guess minor details. But we cannot test it yet because marbles for each digit are selected every second and on each input ramp as little as 4 to 6 marbles can be stored. So some input ramps will be emptied before the stack does one turn. And as I've said before, I'd like for this clock to work like all the time. So we need to resupply every channel on every ramp with new marbles and we need to do it fast, like every second. Doing it by hand is only useful for testing and not that fun, especially after the 20th time. So we need an alternative. The first idea that comes to mind is to replicate the elevator of the original marble clock and just leave the marbles to each channel using it. And I definitely thought of that when designing this. On the ramps, I carefully designed the thickness and position of the releasers so when all the channels are full, all the last marbles end up at the same point, almost reaching the end of the ramp, but never sticking out. That way, when I'm loading the marbles and the channel is full, the elevator link passes in front of it with another marble and the marble skips that channel and keeps traveling upwards. This is important to keep in mind because if a marble were to stick out too much, it could get caught between the elevator link and the ramp and the entire clock would self-destroy, not only damaging the clock itself, but, but also my feelings. Knowing this, there is another thing that we need to be careful about. The marbles cannot roll from the elevator to the ramp while the elevator is moving, unless the elevator is moving very slowly, because it takes a bit of time for the marble to start rolling and finally transferring to the ramp, and the marble again could get stuck between the ramp and the elevator, destroying the clock and my self-confidence. But the elevator cannot be moving slowly. We need to be able to deliver one marble to each channel on each ramp every second. So I will be stopping the elevator when it is aligned with the ramp so the marble can be transferred and then very quickly move up the elevator until it is aligned again over and over. And now that we got that out of the way, my feelings are safe, right? <laughs> Not so fast. If I run the elevator normally, we can see how all the channels fill up from bottom to top until all the channels are full. And then the elevator overflows on the top. To simulate what's missing on this test, I made this simple gate to be able to select marbles from one of the channels. If I simulate the marbles being selected on one of the channels every second, then the elevator gets emptied on that channel every single time, starving all the channels above it and making the clock fail. I knew I couldn't trust it. I knew it! But don't worry, because as I've stated from the beginning, my approach to building this clock is going to be based on recent imprecise calculations in brute force and overkill. So instead of lifting one marble with each link, I will be lifting five. This way, even if the elevator leaves one marble on each ramp, it will still be able to deliver at least one marble to all the ramps. So we can definitely use an elevator to fill up the channels, but not quite like this one. And that's why I'm going to use this to build the new elevator. This is just one link of the elevator and has six holes in total, one for each channel. But on each hole we can fit up to five marbles for a total of 30 marbles, which should be enough to make a proper marble elevator. But before we do that, let me talk to you about today's video sponsor, Onshape. Onshape is a professional grade CAD and PDM system and they are now offering up to six months free of the professional version to engineers 
and their companies. The thing that sets Onshape apart from traditional CAD systems is that it was built entirely in the cloud and works in a web browser, similarly to Google Docs, so you can share and collaborate in real time with the other members in your team. With Onshape, every single action you make is recorded, so you can always revert back to changes you made before. Onshape also has a GitHub-inspired method of branching and merging. So if someone has an idea to alter part of a design, they can create a branch and work on their idea without disrupting the main design, and later merge in that branch if they want. With Onshape, everyone on your team always has access to a single source of truth of the up-to-date design, so no more searching around for the latest version of a file. And you can also run Onshape on nearly any device or operating system even on the iOS or Android mobile app. I highly recommend the engineers and product designers to check out Onshape. You can get started with Onshape for free at onshape.pro slash Ivan Miranda. And now let's get back to the elevator. So this is it, but we will need more than one. I've printed a few links in Cruzament PLA Galaxy Black, so it is easier to see the movement. And I'm also going to need a bunch of this. And a bunch of this too. I'm using M8 screws to join the links together and to make it easier to assemble, I've adjusted the depth of the holes so I can drive the screws all the way in and it just leaves enough space for the spacing link to move freely. And just like that, with 42 links and 84 M8 screws and tiny links, we have a full elevator chain complete. But we need somewhere to put it. This, this is not comfortable, it weighs a lot. So I'm going to build a frame for it and everything that is required to move it using these 30 by 30 extrusions that I've already cut to length and then drill and tap the holes to be able to use these brackets in here, hopefully. To join the extrusions, I'm using these 3D printed brackets and I often get asked why don't I use the commercial ones made of aluminium? Aluminium will be stronger in most cases, but for a light build like this, ease of assembly is more important. And when doing a two or three way corner with the aluminium ones, you need flat head screws. And with this, I can use the regular screws that I use in all my builds, and I can even make corners that match special angles. So it's a win-win. I even made an 11 degree T connector that I will leave loose for now. I need to not forget to insert all the nuts where they are required. This isn't right. This and this should be at the end. Yes, just give me a second. This makes way more sense. Next is the traction wheel that goes on the top and the idler that goes on the bottom for which I printed all these parts in here. You will almost never see me driving a screw all the way in in one go. I usually shift through all the screws, driving them in a few turns at a time. I do that to avoid the plastic getting too hot and melting, ruining the thread and even the part itself. And now a few brackets, one for the top wheel, As I said before, nobody's perfect. There is an extra part that I need to install the elevator chain. In the original marble clock elevator, the links remained upright because the weight was mainly in the middle and also the links were really thin. So the tension of the chain itself made it stay straight. 
but the new links are really wide and the weight can be displaced on the link. One of these links at any moment can have between 30 or no marbles at all inside. So they can become unbalanced and twist and lose the alignment with the rest of the parts on the clock. And that's why we need this guide in here. This guide has a slot on each side that matches the width of these screws in here. So we can insert the entire chain through them and that way the links will remain perfectly aligned with the rest of the clock. Uh, I think it's time. Let's see how many times I pinch my hands. This thing is heavy. I designed a tightening slot into the lower wheel brackets, but I just realized that I can do that just by pushing down on the brackets themselves. So yeah, I, I leave it like that. You can see here the difference between the links that are constrained by the guide and the ones that aren't. I think this will make a difference. Well, the chain seems to roll just fine. So the next logical step is to attach the ramps just here. And for that I'm going to be using a new bracket so I can attach it to the elevator. This bracket also changes the spacing between the ramps from 46 to 45 millimeters, which matches the rest of the design, so I just need to swap the ramps from one bracket to the other. As we've seen earlier in the scaled down version, once the elevator fills up all the channels in all the ramps, the remaining marbles overflow from the top and I, I, I don't want them to end up in the floor, as always. So I made this exit curve that I can install up here so I can collect the remaining marbles and avoid disaster. And I'll add an extra temporary section so I can aim the exiting marbles to a bucket or something. And now of course we need a way to fill the elevator with new marbles. So let's install this input ramp inside here. If it ends up fitting. And a couple of divided input ramps so I can load the white and black marbles to their respective channels. And now to move the elevator I will be installing this motor as a temporary solution because even though I still think that I can make the entire clock work with a single motor, I still need to synchronize everything, so for now I will be using this. You can see that the output gear of the motor isn't connected to anything because this is a fairly heavy assembly, so I will install this 5 to 1 reduction gear to make it easier for the motor to move the entire assembly. Before I synchronize everything, I cannot use two assemblies at once, but anyway, I will install the marble selector on the elevator, because when the elevator is loading marbles in the ramps, I need the selectors to be in the center position so the marbles are flush with the ends of the ramps and the elevator doesn't get stuck and breaks everything. And I think that's it, it's time to throw in some marbles and see what breaks. Can you hear that creaking noise? I've been looking everywhere to find the source of the noise and I finally found it. When I designed the elevator links, I added these fins here because that's where the channels are and I didn't want marbles to get stuck in there. But it seems that marbles jumped out of this precarious input ramp and most of the times that marble will get in one of the holes and that's the end of the story. But it seems that this time this one got caught in one of the gaps between links and got crushed. Added to the list of future design improvements. I'm having a minor issue here, when all five ramps are full, 
The marbles don't come out the overflow ramp at the top as they should because I left a gap between the top ramp and the overflow ramp. It's fixed in the 3D model, but I forgot that not all five ramps are the same design, but I've printed a good version of the design, so I will swap this ramp for this one and see what breaks next. See, now there is a continuous wall between the top ramp and the exit ramp, so marbles cannot fall through it now. I installed this fancy fence around the table, so marbles don't end up in the floor as always, but to be honest, it doesn't do much if the marbles fall from the top of the clock. Either way, let's try again. Good to see that when following the original design, things work. I've been moving the elevator at the right speed for the marbles to be loaded onto the elevator and for the marbles to be unloaded onto the ramps. But obviously, this is not the right speed, as I mentioned before. The right speed would look more or less like this. A little bit more violent, a little bit more noisy, because marble clock's noisy. Sadly, as it is right now, I cannot use it in this way. Because it is not synchronized with the rest of the machine, not aligned with the trace, but that's coming soon, that's why you should subscribe, subscribe. And I think that this is it for this video because this took a while. Thanks a lot to all my Patreon members, thank you. And now please go and make something!